Hello, physics students, and welcome to um, section 2.3. We're going to continue looking at vector operations, and we're going to discuss um, some more aspects of that. Here are the items we're going to look at. We're going to look at components of a vector, uh, what that means. Um, we're going to look at sine and cosine functions for right triangles. We looked at uh, tangent functions, now we're going to look at sine and cosine functions. We're going to um, look at situations where our vectors are not perpendicular, and how do we do that? And then we'll look at how to solve that and how we add those vectors algebraically. So if you remember our example of, uh, with our pyramids in it, we had um, both hor a horizontal component and a vertical component. Uh, the horizontal part and the vertical part are called components. Um, they are perpendicular to each other, and in fact, any vector can be thoroughly described by a set of perpendicular components. Um, as long as they are perpendicular, they ended up actually describing uh, the displacement um, for a problem. So in order to resolve a vector, we just break it into its individual components. Let's use an example to illustrate how we think about breaking uh, motion down into its individual components. Let's say that we have a film crew, um, not a very big film crew, one person, <laughs> filming um, this airplane. And, and the film crew is in this truck traveling perfectly horizontally along the ground. We have this airplane traveling, and uh, let's say it is going at 95 kilometers per hour. At, and it is um, traveling at an angle of 20 degrees right here above the ground. What is the speed that this truck needs to remain traveling at in order for the film crew to be right uh, beneath the airplane to be filming it? Well, in order to solve this, we realize that this airplane is going at a velocity that is 20 degrees um, north of east. And... Um, we need to look at uh, both of its components. We need to look at the horizontal component and the vertical component in order to determine um, how fast this truck needs to travel because this truck will need to travel exactly the horizontal component of the plane's motion. Now, one really nice thing about this problem is that we can look at this... Oops draw a line right here. It's our imaginary line. If you'll notice, this makes a right angle right down here, which is really convenient because since that makes a right angle, we can use trigonometric functions to solve this problem. So when we look at our, um, I just rewrote our uh, trigonometric functions here. You remember we were working with tangent of theta would be equal to opposite over adjacent. Sine theta, if you'll remember from math, or maybe this is new, I don't know, is opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's theta right here. 20 degrees is theta. We have, we can take theta, and we would like to, obviously, we know the hypotenuse, so we'd like this to be part of uh, the equation. Um, and we'd like to know this line right here. This, the velocity here. The velocity here would be uh, adjacent. This is opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Those are the different lines. So if we look at uh, something of theta, we want adjacent and hypotenuse in it. That means we would probably use the cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is going to be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. We know what theta is, so we could plug theta in. We could say cosine of 20 degrees, and that gives us the um, adjacent, which is our unknown, the velocity, which will end up being what the velocity of the truck is, the velocity of the horizontal component over the hypotenuse, which is 95 kilometers per hour. So from here, you should be able to do some easy algebra Find the cosine of 20 degrees, then multiply both sides by 95 kilometers per hour, and that would give you 
the velocity in the horizontal direction, would be, which would be the velocity that the truck needs to travel in order to stay directly underneath that little plane. So here I have rewritten these equations for you in a much neater form, hopefully. <laughs> we, have, uh, we already learned the tangent function for the right triangles. Here's simply the sine function and the cosine function for right triangles. And once again, if this is theta, um, this is our the right, the right angle here. So the hypotenuse is uh, the side of the triangle across from the right angle. We have theta here, so the opposite side of the triangle would, uh, of theta is the opposite, and the adjacent is the one next to it that is not the hypotenuse. So just in case you haven't done this before, those are sort of the ground rules. Here is another little mnemonic. I don't know if you've learned this in math, but this helps me to remember uh, the little formulas for the trig functions. And that's so ka toa kind of sounds like, a, I don't know, some tribal name or something, but um, so would be sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, ka would be cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and toa, tangent of theta, would be equal to opposite over adjacent. And you can always draw yourself a little picture to help you figure that out. If you just remember so, ka, toa, um, and you can spell that, then uh, that's kind of an easy way to remember these trig functions. So let's try an example. Before we do the example, I, I just want to also um, mention, in case uh, I hadn't mentioned it before, vectors can be moved parallel to themselves in a diagram. Um, I can move um, a vector anywhere on uh, my xy axis uh, that I want to as long as it remains parallel to that initial position. Um, therefore, I can kind of choose my own coordinate system how I want to, and that doesn't change my answer in the end because I'm going to maintain that particular coordinate system. Um, let's look at this example. An arrow is shot from a bow at an angle of 25 degrees above the horizontal with an initial speed of 45 meters per second. Find should be capitalized the horizontal and vertical components of the arrow's initial velocity. So first, let's obviously we need to define this. We need to uh, choose our coordinate system and sketch our problem. First, I just set up an x y axis, and uh, our arrow is representing the arrow being shot up at 45 meters per second, and the angle at which it is shot is 25 degrees, that's theta, above the horizontal. The things that I know, I know my velocity, 95 meters per second, my theta is 25 degrees, uh, the horizontal component of the velocity and the vertical component of the velocity are the two things that I need to find. I don't know those, those are question marks. Next, I need to choose the equations that I'm going to use, um, and I'll go ahead and write those down. Okay, here I wrote my two equations, and um, you can see my sine of theta, here's theta, is going to be equal to the opposite component, which is right here, the vertical component, that would be Vy here, um, over the hypotenuse, which is V right there. I went ahead and clarified that for you on the diagram, um, the vertical and horizontal components. And remember, uh, cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent side, which is going to be the horizontal component of the velocity, Vx, um, over the hypotenuse, V. So there are two ways I can do this at this point. I can simply plug the values in for what I know. I know uh, V and I know theta in both of these equations. I do not know um, the, the uh, velocity of each of the individual components, vertical and horizontal. I can simply plug the values in and then chug away algebraically, or I can do the algebra first and rearrange each of the equations um, so that my, uh, my variable that I'm solving for is on the left, like this. Um, either way will give you the same answer. Just for kicks and giggles, I will um, rearrange it first this time. Um, some people like to do it one way and some the other, and both will give you the same answer. So here, if I, oops, that should be theta. If I rearrange um, 
my equation first, I get this and I can simply plug the values in. So when I do that, I get um, my vertical component, the component in the y direction, as being 41 meters per second. And I'll do the same for um, my horizontal component. So when I plug those values in, I end up, sorry about that, I kind of ran it out of room, I get 45 meters per second times a cosine of 25 degrees. I get the velocity of my horizontal component when I plug that into the calculator at 19 meters per second. Now what happens if our vectors are not perpendicular? So far we've looked at uh, perpendicular vectors. It's really beautiful because we can easily apply our little uh, trig functions. But if they're not perpendicular, we cannot directly apply the Pythagorean theorem or the tangent function. So, um, or, or sine or cosine, uh, any of the trig functions. So how are we going to do this? Here is the approach. We're going to add our vectors algebraically. And all it means is we're going to be breaking down um, our components a little bit more. We're just separating um, the components into individual parts. We are going to find two vector components that each form a right triangle with the resultant vector. And then we can go back and use our Pythagorean theorem and our um, trig functions. And uh, once we do that, here's an example. What if we have uh, two vectors and they do not form a right triangle? We're going to make two right triangles out of them. We're going to make, uh, add two vectors together here for this one, and we're going to add these two vectors here for this one. Um, we will be able to then find the magnitude via the Pythagorean theorem and find the direction via the trigonometric function of each of these, and we can add them all together. So let's do an example. Um, let's look at a hiker who is walking 25.5 uh, kilometers from her base camp at 35 degrees south of east. Let's say the second day she then walks 41.0 kilometers in a direction that is 65 degrees north of east. These are going to not be uh, perpendicular to each other, are they? Well, at this point, she discovers a mine. Determine the magnitude and the direction of her resultant displacement between the base camp and the mine. Well, here are some of the steps we're going to walk through as we do this problem. We first need to look at it, find a coordinate system, sketch it, label everything. Really, really important in physics. Always draw pictures and label them and write down what you know. First thing to do. At, after that, we're going to find the x and y components of the vectors and we'll continue on with our list. I'll pull up our little steps as we do them. First, we're going to sketch our coordinate system. I'm going to put the base camp at the origin because that makes it really easy for me. In our problem, we see that she's going to walk 35 degrees south of east. And we'll just draw our little compass rows here, north, south, east, west, because that's very standard. So if she's going south, of east, she's going to be going kind of this direction, about 35 degrees south of east. And then in the, on the second day, she's going to walk uh, 65 degrees north of east. So here's, uh, when we look at east again, she's going to go 65 degrees north of that. So in that general direction, I'm not measuring this, but I'm giving you a rough idea. I also know that on the second day, she walks 41.0 kilometers, and on the first day, she's uh, walking 25.5 kilometers. We are going to want to find the resultant vector here, and here's where she finds her little mine, and um, those are all the different things we know. We can write in um, the angles, the, the uh, theta angles, and I did that on the next frame to keep it a little neater for you. Okay, so here we have, hopefully a little bit neater for you, we have our first day in red, our second day in blue. Um, the, we have uh, theta 1 and distance 1. We know, that we know that theta 1 angle, we know that distance 1 angle. Wrote those over here, 25.5 kilometers, and the theta is negative 35 degrees because um, it is in a south direction. 
um, we're going to say north, be, consider north being positive arbitrarily, um, but as long as I continue that uh, same pattern throughout my entire problem, I can do that. And we also know that, that for distance here, uh, if we draw an imaginary little line across here, uh, this is theta 2 at 65 degrees, and this is distance 2 at uh, 41.0 kilometers. Here is our resultant vector, uh, distance just plain d and theta just plain theta. That's what we want to find out. So now, the second thing we do, once we sketch all of this out and write down everything that we know, everything we want to know and don't yet, um, now we're ready to go on to our next part. Do not go to step two until you finish with step one. Step one is really important. For step two, we want to find the x and y components of all the vectors. So here I split the vectors into two separate diagrams. I took vector one out and put that on its own diagram and on its own coordinate plane, and then I took out vector two and made its own little coordinate plane over here and drew those separately so that we don't get confused about everything. Now remember what I told you before, as long as I move this parallel, which is what I did here, I can move it anywhere on my coordinate plane. And I chose to move it from the origin because that makes it just easier for me to see. So that's what I did for that vector. Here I just relabeled everything and I broke out my uh, delta x and delta y for day one and I subscripted those one, meaning day one. Um, and then here also I'm, I'm just defining what it is I'm doing. I'm having my delta y and delta x components here as well. Okay, now we need to find the x and y components of the total displacement and then we can add those together. We're going to keep this broken down into day one and day two. We're going to find the x, the x and the y component for day one. We'll find the x and the y component for day two. We'll add the x components together to get the total x. We'll add the y components together to get the total y. So uh, let's start by taking day one. We can use our equation, the cosine theta equals delta x1 over d1. If we rearrange that, we get delta x1 equals d1 times cosine theta. And if we plug those values in for d1, 25.5 kilometers, and multiply by that by the cosine of theta, which is the cosine of negative 35 degrees, we end up with a delta x1 value of 21 kilometers. Then we can do the same thing for the y component. We can say sine theta equals delta y1 over d1 and rearrange that to say delta y1 equals d1 sine theta. And we can plug in our values for d1, 25.5 kilometers, and theta, negative 35 degrees. The sine of theta times um, the 25.5 kilometers gives us a negative 15 kilometers. We can do the same thing with our day two. And I'm not going to rewrite the initial um, equations, but delta x2 equals d2 times cosine theta. I just rearranged this equation and substituted x2 and d2 and for x1 and d1. When I put values in for d2, 41.0 kilometers, and theta at 65 degrees, I multiply those together. I end up with delta x2 equals 17 kilometers. Now I can do the same thing with um, delta y2. And oops, uh, delta y2 is equal to d2 uh, times sine of theta. Be a theta there. And um, substitute those values in. D2 is 41.0 kilometers. Uh, theta is 65 degrees. I multiply the sine of 65 degrees by 41.0 kilometers, and I get 37 kilometers. Now I can add these together for my totals. So let's do that in a different color here. Um, the total x 
is going to be x1 plus x2. So that's 21 kilometers plus 17 kilometers. So my total displacement in the horizontal direction, the x direction, is 38 kilometers. Let's look at the total displacement in the vertical direction. That's going to be y1 plus y2. I know that my y1 is right here, 15 kilometers. Plus y2 is 37 kilometers. And when I add those together, actually it's negative 15. <laughs> When I add those together, 37 minus 15, that's going to be 22 kilometers. So now I simply rewrote um, those values into uh, the graphs there. I have my total x and total y. Since x is perpendicular to y, I can use now the Pythagorean theorem uh, to find the magnitude of that resultant vector. So um, I can go ahead and write down the equation for the Pythagorean theorem. At this point, I can plug values in and chug away algebraically, or I can rearrange my formula so that my uh, variable uh, that I'm solving for is on the left. And I'll go ahead and do that, do it that way for you. So there I just rewrote it, um, taking the square root of the whole thing, obviously, so that I can solve for just d, not d squared. When I substitute uh, these values in, here's my uh, 38 and 22. Uh, I simply can substitute those in here and here. And when I punch that into my calculator, d equals 44 kilometers. So the magnitude of my resultant vector is 44 kilometers. Now I can find the direction of my resultant vector using trigonometric function. So now, uh, remember, we can use our tangent function. Tangent of theta equals delta y over delta x. I'm going to rearrange that for you and just say theta, solve for theta, my, uh, my direction here. Um, is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of delta y over delta x, the totals. And again, I'm going to substitute these values. Here's the delta x right here. Here's the delta y. Get those straight. And for just saving space here and time, if I substitute those values in, take the inverse tangent of them, I end up finding that theta equals exactly 30 degrees. Um, I'm going to write 30 point um, because I need two significant figures. And that I can also write 3.0 times 10 to the first degrees. I can write it either way. That's fine. And I need to specify that it's 30 degrees north of east. Um, and that uh, indicates the exact direction. Last step. Does it make sense? Evaluate this. Um, I've tried to kind of draw this to scale to the best of my abilities, um, in which case, distance. Does this make sense for a distance of 44? If we start with this being like 25 and this is roughly 41, it would be longer, right? And this being maybe 44, uh, would this be just a little bit longer than this? Yeah, it looks about right. It's within the realm of reasonability. Uh, again, drawing to somewhat to scale, not exactly. Would this 30 degrees north of east, does that make sense here for this being the theta? Yeah, it does make sense. So that's our answer. All right, let's do a quick review of these steps for adding vectors algebraically. Um, first, you need to select your coordinate system. You need to sketch the problem out, label everything, write down what you know, what you're looking for, and what you don't know. 
Um, next, you want to find the x and y components of all of your vectors. Then, you can find the x and y components of the total displacement. Then you can find the magnitude of that resultant vector using the Pythagorean theorem and the delta x total and delta y totals. Um, then you can find the direction using your tangent function. Uh, and then evaluate, make sure it makes sense to you. So try practicing a few of those on your own. If you want to do some advanced work, um, try a problem where you add more than two vectors algebraically. Make up your own scenario. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in class.